The Paul Leslie Hour, helping people tell their stories. And now, your host, Paul Leslie. Hey, it's me. We're welcoming a restaurateur and chef, Andy Murray. Andy Murray is the man behind the Murray Brothers Caddyshack restaurant. Along with his friend, the entrepreneur Mac Haskell, that was where the original idea was formed to take the classic golf film Caddyshack and create a restaurant based on it. The original location opened in St. Augustine, Florida in 2001, which I've been a proud eater at every time I pass through. And now there's a second location in Rosemont, Illinois. Andy Murray developed the menu for the restaurants, an honors graduate of the New York Restaurant School. He's worked in some of the most renowned restaurants in New York. It's a great pleasure to welcome him here. Andy Murray, how are you, sir? Well, thank you, Paul. That was very nice of you. <laughs> <laughs> but nobody's been that nice to me all week. So that's great. <laughs> well, I'm glad to have you here. Well, thank you. My pleasure. When did you know that the restaurant industry was for you? Um, it goes back a long time ago. You know, we were all caddies starting out, you know, when we were younger. All my older brothers were caddies and we were expected to be caddies. And so I was I was one of the youngest caddies at Indian Hill Country Club in Winnetka. And uh, so you could start caddying at like 10, 10 years old. You know, you got some of the ladies, you got, you know, you were only carrying single bags, but, you know, it was, that's how you started. Then when I was uh, about 12, a friend of mine said, oh, I got this job. I'm a busboy at this restaurant and my parents are going on vacation. I got to go and I got to get somebody to to cover for me or, or I'm going to get fired. And I said, well, okay, well, I'll do it. And uh, so I walked in, I remember I walking in that morning and the first thing that the guy said to me, he goes, well, what do you want to eat? And I was just like, what? what this is you know this was at seven o'clock in the morning i'm like i was immediately smitten with the uh, restaurant business i said wow they feed you right away this is good when you were a caddy <laughs> you know you had you had to go out and carry a bag and make some money and then you had to eat a bad hot dog at uh, at the at the caddy shack this was this was nice and i i just i enjoyed it i worked with uh i mean it was just it was a it was a corner diner kind of place. said but the guy who was a cook there his name was fred white it still is Fred White. He's still a lot. He showed me a lot and taught me a lot just, you know, in, in the basics in the beginning. So by the time I was, you know, I was in high school, I was the short order cook on Sunday mornings and we were across the street from this Catholic church. So we were just, we'd get slammed on the weekends. So I, I, that's, that's when I really fell in love with it. I, I enjoyed the, the rush and the being able to, you know, just get food out. You know, people just feel better when they're full. That's all. I like that. Very true. What would you say was the the comfort food from your youth? From my youth? Yeah. Oh my uh bacon. It still is. <laughs> there's nothing it's like it. it. There's nothing like it. It's uh you know, my mom was in a you know, she was she wasn't a great cook, but she you know, she you know, she got it out there and, and and nothing was ever left. You know, everything was gone because we had nine kids. But uh, bacon, that was the first thing I learned how to cook was bacon. And so, you know, uh, cooking bacon, and, you know, for the family breakfast, whatever, that's what I did. So I fell in love with bacon a long time ago. And actually, for many years, I, I get uh, bacon on the month club for Christmas presents. So, yeah, that's my that's my go to. Do you like it very crispy or do you like it where it still has some of the streak left? No, I don't like it burnt crispy. I like it. Uh, I like it where you can taste the the crisp fat, though. Yeah, yeah. No, I don't. I don't. I don't. Not raw. No. Not. I don't. You know. Yeah. Bacon is. You know. I'll eat. I'll eat bacon in a lot of different ways. That's uh, <laughs> true. What's something other than bacon that you you feel you can make exceptionally well? Oh. Um, I make a fabulous roast chicken. I really do make a fabulous roast chicken. Uh, some people can do it. Mine are, mine come out and they're moist and, uh, 
They've got uh, wonderful vegetables and mashed potatoes that go with them, and I make a great gravy. That's great. I make a I make a wonderful meatloaf. I mean, I make a, comfort food is my is my strong point. I trained under French guys in New York uh, uh, in the beginning, and uh, I fell in love with a lot of French cooking. I'm a you know I like sauces, I like gravy, but uh, comfort food you know go back to comfort foods when you when you're in a pinch. So what's something, maybe a traditional meal that you'll make for your family when everybody gets together? Besides like Thanksgiving? Yeah. Well, well, my meatloaf is something I do. Uh, I, I make a great beef stroganoff. That's, it's, it's one of those go-to things that I, you know, I can do in my sleep and, and everyone's real happy when they walk out of there. There's some breakfast stuff, chicken hash that I'll make. But you know, give me a give me a great steak on a grill. I'm an easy guy. It's this. Uh, am I a casserole guy? No, not really. But the uh, beef stroganoff, yeah, I do that. I make a great chili. You know, I'm I'm I'm, I'm a simple guy. And simple pleasures are the best in my book. All the listeners out there, they can visit mbcshack.com. That's going to take them to. The Murray Brothers Caddyshack Restaurant website. We're talking to Chef Andy Murray. You know, I had the chance to interview a couple of your brothers, Ed Murray and John Murray, and I didn't really get a straight answer on this one. I asked them, what do you recommend that people get there? What do you recommend? At the Caddyshack restaurants? Yeah, what do you recommend? Right off the bat, the crab cakes. Our crab cakes are wonderful. And it's a real, it's a nice mix. They don't, it's not full of filler. It's, it's got some, it's got crab in it. And, uh, we make a nice sriracha sauce that goes on the side. It's, it's pretty, it's pretty darn good. They're, they're, uh, you know, are they, you know, Maryland crab cakes? They're no, but they're, they're pretty darn good for, for, for everybody else. That's the first thing I'll go. I have to think about it, you know, because I have to, I have to look at the menu and see what I got on there. If we're just, I'm just going through changes on some things. But, uh, yeah, we do have a fabulous burger. My burger is, is great. We have an Italian beef that, you know, some people say, well, it's, it's kind of our, 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 our ode to Chicago, but it's a little bit different than Chicago. It's because the bread's different in, in, well, it's called in, in Chicago, it's fine at the Rosemont restaurant, but in Florida, the bread's a little bit different. But we we make it our own jardiniere uh, peppers that we put on it that are a little bit different than uh, you get from other people, and I, I do like that a lot. I mean, there's there's nothing on the menu I wouldn't eat. That's the thing. You know, having been a waiter for a lot of my life, there's always an item on the menu that I feel like is the most underrated thing that I would always be trying to get people. Like, please, just give it a shot. Try this. Would you say that there's something on the menu that is the most underrated? Yeah, the quinoa bowl salad. People go, oh, quinoa, it's uh, so healthy. But this, our quinoa bowl salad is, uh, it's got, it's, you know, it's cabbage, it's black beans, it's, 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 uh, it's pulpe lime sauce, it's, uh, and, and chicken. It's, it, you think of, it doesn't seem like much when you read it. But then when you start eating it, you just you just don't stop. It's, <laughs> it really is. And I've, I've sold a lot of people on that. And they just, they, uh, they go, okay. And they come back and they order it and they order it. That, we have this new thing, these, these uh, Buffalo Brussels sprouts that we've, we, we started making this year. This last, well, in the last year. And we're selling a lot of those. If you you know if you, if you like Brussels sprouts, it's great. But if you like chicken wings, it's even better because you know uh, it's it's a it's a happy medium between the two. That sounds really good. Yeah, it really is. A lot of our listeners are wondering the answer to this question: Does Andy Murray believe that ketchup belongs on a hot dog? No. <laughs> Not yet. No, I just, uh, no, you know, you can put a hot dog in, 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 
and, and split pea soup. You can put it, uh, you can have it on the side with you know, and sauerkraut on the side without a bun, but ketchup. No, I've never, I can't put ketchup on a hot dog. You know, something that's interesting about the restaurant industry is that you meet so many interesting characters. You know, <laughs> you take a guy who who talks to himself and anybody else would maybe not give them a chance. But in the restaurant industry, sometimes the answer to that is, when can you start? <laughs> you know, it's, it, it's it, finding good help is in the restaurant business right now is probably harder than it's ever been. And so, yeah, you do, you, yeah, if they're talking to themselves, but they can, they have pretty good knife skills. Yeah. Yeah. I'll give them a shot. You meet some interesting characters in the restaurant business. You really do. And, you know, you learn to become a pretty uh, open person because you're dealing with so many different personalities and so many different lifestyles because all these different people gravitate towards the restaurant business. It's, It's a good thing. Something that has really changed the restaurant business is all of these review sites like Yelp. Now everybody's a critic. And something else that I've noticed is that sometimes it's like some people just can't be satisfied. You know, you're always going to want to go out of your way to help somebody, you know, get them something that they're going to enjoy and give them the best service. But what do you do, in your opinion, when somebody just, it just seems like they just cannot be made happy? Oh, I just, you know, we hopefully they're just having a bad day and they'll come back and give us another chance. And sometimes that, that is the case. And, but then there's some day you just can't make everybody happy sometimes. You know, we have the weeks where, you know, you know, we feed 3,000, you know, more, more people uh, in a week and, and one or two sometimes falls through the crack. And if they tell us, if somebody, you know, makes a point and tells us, we will we will bend over backwards to to make it right. But if nobody tells you, you don't know until then you see it on a review or somebody was very unhappy. But if they had if they had come to a manager, if they said to a, a waiter, the waiter because the waiters are you know instructed to go right to a manager and let the manager deal with it, and we always deal with it. And that's what you know you got to do it. I'm hoping you can tell us about your musical interests. My musical interests. My musical interests are pretty much, you know, they're, they're old stuff. I'm uh, I'm an old school kind of guy. I was uh, I was fortunate when I was younger. I was, got into the the church boys choir, and we had a pastor, Monsignor Meter, who was a crazy good musician, really, really good musician. And, you know, he studied in Rome and he sang, you know. He, he led the uh, the Vatican choir for a while, and then he came to sh- back to Chicago, and then he, he ran Holy Name Cathedral Choir, and he ended up being a, a, a made a Monsignor, and they sent him to St. Joe's, where we grew up in Walmart. And uh, it had this wonderful, huge organ, and he could play like nobody. But he got me into singing at a very young age. At uh, you know, well, it was you know eight nine years old he had this boys choir the Pori Contours, and uh we sang we sang you know sunday masses we sang in old people's homes we we you know and because of that i was able to do some travel we sang the lyric opera house in chicago but we went on when i was uh 11 there was a trip to rome and uh we went we sang at the vatican then we sang at we sang. We were in Italy for a week, and uh, one day we went down to Pompeii to see the volcano and the ruins. and And we were coming back, and then Sorrento. We were coming on Sorrento, and we hadn't eaten yet. And Monsignor Meter, he was fluent in Italian. He knew all the cardinals and everybody, so he, he got around. But uh, so we were coming back in these two buses, and we pulled into this place. We we're going to have some lunch. There was a wedding going on, and Monsignor Meter started talking to the father of the bride. And, Five minutes later, we were up singing, and we were done singing. And all these big bowls of pasta came in front of us. It was a beautiful thing. But because of that, <laughs> I always felt I was a pretty good singer, and I and I stayed it with it. And uh, in high school, I was in boys ensemble. But then when I got older, I I didn't do much of it. And I was living in New York, and I got to be friends with uh, some pretty good musicians. 
and I was always telling them how, you know, I sang for the Pope and I, you know, I could sing like an angel. And, uh, this friend of mine said, well, well, we can, we could put a band together. Let's put the band together and we'll play at this club. We all hung out this one club, JP's, which was a music club in New York. And so I was the guy, Dennis Blair, who's a comedian who's still around and does a lot of stuff. But, uh, the band was in, it was an incredible band. It was like Jimmy Vivino, who was Conan O'Brien's music director for the last six, seven years, and still one of the best guitar players around. Steve Holly, who was uh, he was one of the drummers for Wings, the second drummer for Wings. Dean McDonald was one of the guys who wrote Court of the Crimson King, was the keyboard player. Brian Stanley was in the Graham Parsons project. And, uh, it was like it was like it was it was like kind of like Holiday Inn. We would just uh, we would play on my birthday, somebody's birthday, Christmas party, Easter. You know, just, you know, once every six weeks or so, we would just get up and we would play. We'd have these gigs, and and everyone would show up, and it was just wonderful. It was, and you know, the next day, I'd be back and I'd be in front of a stove, sweating, cooking, <laughs> and I was like, oh, "What was I doing? All these people were screaming for me last night on stage, and here I am." And, you know, I'm working today, but uh, something's not right here. But, but those guys, you know, they want, they were serious musicians. I was, I was more, I was like a, an amateur. I was just an amateur. Did you guys make any recordings? We did make a recording. We did make a couple of recordings. A friend of mine, my friend Dennis Blair wrote this song for me. And it was, uh, you know, based on, because I, I would always kid. Well, I don't know if I was kidding, but I always thought I was, I was in, I was a good looking guy and, and I was, I'm a fairly vain person, but, uh, you know, Joe Namath had come out with this book. Uh, I can't wait till tomorrow cause I get better looking every day. So Dennis ran with it and wrote this song for me. And it's, it's a very funny song and it's actually very good. And there were some wonderful musicians on it. A bunch of those guys that I would, I just named. And then Frank Owens, who was, uh, he, he played the keyboard for David Letterman when, uh, when Letterman first got on TV. And he was a keyboard player. Well, it's only it. We had the Uptown Horns play on it. So, yeah, it was pretty cool. Very interesting. Well, you know, a lot of people are aware about your brother, Bill Murray, and his embarkment on music. And I'm curious, is it hard at all being the brother of someone who's so famous? Because you're... You know, you're maybe at a ball game or something and, you know, everybody wants to take a picture or maybe they, they say, hey, can you hand this to him and have him sign this? Is that is that ever troublesome? Uh, yeah, it is. Sometimes sometimes it, it, if people are if they're rude and pushy, they don't get anywhere with us. We just say no. And, and Billy is Billy is uh, he's very generous with his time and, and signing autographs for most people doesn't care for professional autograph seekers he I, for some reason he can smell them out at 100 yards you know <laughs> no no you're a professional no it's okay. <laughs> and goes on to the people who aren't but uh he's adamant about people who come up and and don't introduce themselves they just say oh take a picture with me and he goes well what he says is where i come from we introduce ourselves first and uh, they look at him like he's crazy but He's old school, you know, what's your name? What are you doing? And, uh, or keep up with me because he walks real fast, but it, you know, in the same breath, we, you know, and we also watch his back, you know, there's, there are some people out there that are kind of goofy and you just kind of, it's just trying to set up a screen so they don't uh, get too close sometimes. I'm hoping you can tell us about your brother, John Murray. I mean, he's a really interesting guy. I think. Johnny's great. Johnny's 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 smart and funny and he's uh, and sweet and he's one of the sweetest people you ever meet in your life. Hmm. What would you say is the best thing about being Andy Murray? Oh, um, having my son Drew. That's the best thing I've got going for me. I don't know. I'm just I'm I'm, I'm a pretty lucky guy. I've got I've got wonderful friends. And they've always got my back and I've got a family that's really tight and we stick together. We are a very tight family. And we, you know, there's, I know a lot of people who come from families and they don't talk to their brothers or sisters anymore. 
we talk all the time. So it's, I guess it's just, you know, I'm, I'm lucky that I'm, I'm surrounded by family and friends that, uh, they like me, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. I'm easy. I'm easy to please. <laughs> I always like to end the interviews. I give the guest the stage. I just let them take the microphone. You can go anywhere you want with this. For anyone who's tuned in, what would you say to them? Uh, I would say if you're going into Chicago and, and you're by O'Hare, you should go over to the Murray Brothers Caddyshack. If you're in Florida, you should go to Murray Brothers Caddyshack in St. Augustine, the oldest city in America, if you remember geography class. And there's a lot of people that don't. And I would just say, be nice to somebody today. It'll make their day. <laughs> well spoken. Well, everybody out there, they can go to mbcshack.com. That's going to take them right to the Murray Brothers Caddyshack restaurant website. There's lots of stuff to check out there. My last question, who is Andy Murray? Uh, he's just a lucky guy. <laughs> That's all he is. He's just, he's just, he's just, he's just dumb lucky is what he is. Well, thank you very much for spending time with us. Thank you, Paul. I appreciate it. My pleasure. All right. You take care of yourself. All right, sir. Until next time. Okay. All right. To the loop. Ba ba doodly beep ba ba dee da dee bum ba dee boo ra ba dee ka na za jee ba ki la ka na za ki la ba 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 za ki la